Okay, in today's video, I'm going to go over a very interesting and somewhat confusing topic. People often use these two words interchangeably, mass and weight. And we're going to talk about what is the difference between mass and weight. Because when people ask sometimes, like what, when people ask, well, how much do you weigh? For example, say, oh, I weigh 65 kilograms. Well, kilograms, as most people know, is not a unit for the weight or the force. It's the unit of mass. So really, when you say, I weigh 65 kilograms, that's not your weight. That's your mass. We don't say it that way, but that's what people, that's, there, there is a difference. Because when you calculate your weight or the force due to gravity, you have to use Newton's second law, which is mass, your mass times the acceleration due to gravity, which we're going to talk about in the next couple of slides. Okay, so first of all, what is mass? Mass is a measure of an object's resistance to a change in motion. That's the most kind of specific, I would say maybe the most scientific, but it doesn't really give me an intuitive sense of what mass is. I like to tell my students when I start off, that mass is the amount of stuff that something is made of. It's a measure of the amount of stuff. The more your mass, the higher your mass, the more stuff you're made of. But stuff isn't really a very good word to use in science class. So then we say it's the measure of the amount of matter that an object has. And what is that matter made up of? What are the billion blocks of matter? The billion blocks of matter are atoms. What are atoms made of? Atoms are made of protons, neutrons, and electrons. So really, it's a measure of the amount of protons, neutrons, and electrons are atoms that you're made up of. The more atoms you have, the more matter you have. The more matter something has, the more stuff it has. The more stuff it has, the harder it is to change its motion. Okay, A big thing, a more massive thing, is harder to change its motion than a smaller thing. Okay, Think about when you pick something up or you want to push something or move something. Smaller things are generally easier to move because they have less mass. Okay, all right, so let's talk about what the abbreviation for the mass is M. M for mass, most people know that. Now, remember the unit, the base unit in the metric system for mass is the kilogram. Okay, and so we can say, for example, the mass of something is 12.5 kilograms, or the mass of an object, or the mass of a person is 65 kilograms. We like to say that mass is constant. If you have an object that's just sitting there, then really its mass is not going to change unless you cut it in half or add something to it. But really, it's just an object. The mass is not constant. And the mass does not depend on, the, depend on the location. It doesn't matter where you move it to. It will have the same mass. OK, now let's talk about what weight is. Weight is simply a force. OK, your weight is your force of attraction to the Earth. So it's the force. Weight, in the general sense, is the force in, of an, on an object due to gravity. Well, why do those things? Why do you have weight? Because it's the force of attraction between two objects that have mass. You have mass. The Earth has mass. Therefore, the Earth pulls on you. You pull on Earth. And really, how, how much the Earth is pulling on you, that is your weight. It's a force. Weight is a force. And it's the amount. So oh, I saw this uh, um, definition on the internet. I'm not quite sure this is the best definition. But since we use the acceleration due to gravity, it's the amount of force the acceleration due to gravity exerts on an object. Okay? So please remember that your weight is simply the force of attraction to the Earth. Okay, Weight is a force of attraction. It's kind of a special case for a force of attraction between two objects that have mass. But weight is a force. Now, when we abbreviate weight, we usually don't use a W, because W is kind of for work. So it is a force, so we use F. F is the symbol for force. Okay. And it's measured in Newtons. Sir Isaac Newton, the measured in Newtons, and the abbreviation for the Newton is an N. So therefore, we can say, for example, that the force of attraction between two objects or the weight of an object is 15 Newtons. Or we can say that the weight of an object is 0 0.75 Newtons. All right, And the force is not constant. It does depend on your location, which we'll talk about in just a moment. Now, when we calculate the weight of an object, the easiest way, not the only way, but the easiest way to do that is to use Newton's second law, F equals ma. But we write it a special way. It's actually the same equation, but we write Fg. Now, sometimes you'll see Fw for weight, but I like to put Fg, the force of gravity. And we do that, you calculate your weight by taking your mass and simply multiplying it by the acceleration due to gravity on the surface of Earth, which a lot of people know is 9.81 meters per second squared. Okay, so that's kind of the definition of mass and weight. Now, let's see if we can give a little bit better comparison of the two. Okay, here's mass and weight. Now, this is supposed to show you how they're different. 
Here you are on Earth. Here's you, here's Earth, and you have a mass. Okay? When somebody asks you how much you weigh and you say 65 kilograms, I said, that's not true. That's your mass. Your mass is 65 kilograms. Well, as we said in the previous slide, to calculate your weight, we use Newton's second law. The force of gravity, or the weight, is equal to your mass times the acceleration due to gravity on the surface of Earth. Well, on the surface of Earth, or on Earth, in most places, the acceleration due to gravity is 9.81. So we take your mass, and we multiply that by 9.81 meters per second squared, and your weight on Earth, you would weigh on Earth, or you weigh on Earth, 638 newtons. That's if your mass is 65 kilograms. Okay? 65 kilograms. And your weight is 638 newtons. That's the force of attraction between you and the Earth. Okay, now here's the Earth. Now here's the Moon. You'll notice the Moon is smaller and it's also less massive. So let's just say you decide now to go to the Moon. You take your four arms, four arms, you don't have four arms, you take your two arms, your two legs, your head, your body, and all your stuff, all of your matter, to the moon, and the, the amount of stuff, the amount of matter that you're made of, the number of protons, neutrons, electrons, atoms hasn't changed. Now, that's given the fact that you have to assume that, okay, you didn't eat 100 cheeseburgers between here and here. You're here, 65 kilograms, then you go over to the moon, the same person, and you still have a mass of 65 kilograms. You're the number of the stuff you're made of didn't change, okay? But we can calculate your weight on Earth, on Earth, on the moon using the same equation. The force of gravity, the weight, is equal to the mass. Well, the mass is the same, but on the moon, the acceleration due to gravity is less than it is on Earth. It's not 9.81. It's, I think it's 1.62. We'll see. It's 1 sixth because the moon is less massive, so there's less attraction between you and the moon. Weight is a measure of the force of attraction between two objects. Okay, it's just a special kind of force. So now we're going to multiply the 65 kilograms times 1.62 meters per second squared, and you find that on the moon. Okay, if you take your bathroom scale with you and you put it on the moon and you stand on it, it'll say 105 newtons. You weigh less because there's less attraction because the moon is smaller and it has less mass. Okay, so you, excuse me. Yes, it has less mass. So you can see your mass is the same. It doesn't depend on the location, but your weight is different. It does depend on the location. Okay? Now let's just look at all the locations in the solar system. And let's just say you're starting on Earth, and then one day you go to Mercury, 65 kilograms, you haven't changed. Then you go to Venus. Now you can't go to all these planets, it's not that easy, and uh, you'd probably die on some of them. But uh, you would always have the same stuff that you brought with you. You have two arms two legs, a body, a head, and all the other stuff, and your mass is always the same. But each planet has a different acceleration due to gravity because each one has a different size and a different mass. So on, on it's different on every planet. You'll notice on Mercury, it's only 3.59 meters per second squared. You'll notice on Jupiter, the more massive, the biggest planet, okay, the most massive planet, is 25.95. Now we just multiply these across to find out how much you would weigh on each planet. Your mass is the same, but when we multiply to find the weight using mg, Newton's second law, you get that on Mercury you would only weigh 233 newtons. On Venus you weigh a little more, but still less on Earth. On Mars it's less. On Jupiter it's the most, because Jupiter is a really massive planet. On Saturn it's less. Saturn is actually a pretty gaseous planet. It's not that much mass. It's big, but it's mostly gas. Okay, and there you go on Neptune. All right, so you can see that mass and weight are not the same thing. Your mass is the same regardless of where you go, but depends on the force of attraction, which depends on the acceleration due to gravity, which depends on the mass and the size or the radius of the planet. Okay, so there you go. I hope you found it helpful. I hope that clears things up a little bit, especially when you're in class and you need to know the mass of something you're calculating the, you know, um, the force of attraction using Newton's universal law of gravitation. Okay, that's mass and weight. Hope you found it helpful. If you did, please do all the following three things. Subscribe to my channel, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Let's see, then you can leave me a thumbs up for this video, and why don't you do that after that? Then you can leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. Thank you very much. We'll see you in the next video.